Hi. I'm here. I'm here. Okay, today I'm going to talk about sound and how I arrived at my current setup. No? <coughs> First off, if you're on a budget, the best instructional I've seen on the net is by a vlogger by the name of Bea Chu. Now, it involves something you probably already have, which is your phone headset. Yeah, it's usually tangled. It's your phone headset. No. <coughs> now, your phone headset usually has a microphone, so you can accept calls, right? And usually, there's a little hole here. No. So what she does is, you know, instead of most people, because they put it on and they just leave it dangling, <coughs> what she does is she gets uh, bobby pins no, and attaches it to her shirt or to the lapel. Well, because it is a lapel mic in a sense. No? So <coughs> that one, it stays close to your mouth. It two, it doesn't bump or scrape into your body or, your, or clothes. No? And thus, it gives you a good sound. Okay? Now, I'm going to put a link to the video in the description below. Okay. Now, <coughs> as for me, because I've been an audio professional for many years, uh, I put together a collection of equipment that I do, that I use when I have my own little recordings at home. You know? <coughs> so I started off back in the 80s with a dynamic microphone. <laughs> it's a Roland DR181. Uh, it's a Shure SM57 uh, lookalike. You know? And <laughs> look, it's kind of bug bug already, you know, but it still works, you know. I still take it out whenever there's a program or stuff like that, and I know that people are going to drop it, you know, so it still works, you know. I still have it. It's a really, really handy thing, you know. <coughs> and then I got this in 2003 for a field recording project. This is a large diaphragm condenser microphone. Big ass. You know. It's a Behringer B1. You know. That's okay. It sounds nice. It's reasonably rugged because it's still alive. It survived a year in the field. You know. So I still have it and I use it every now and then. So, okay. <coughs> and then in 2012, <coughs> I got this. No. It's a Rode NT55. No. Small diaphragm condenser with, um, and I'm using the Omni capsules. No. I use this for a sound, um, soundscape recording project in 2012. No. Since then I use it for all sorts of things. And Last year, I used it for a recording of my uh, cymbals. You know, I had a cymbal project. You'll probably see it on my channel. It's down there somewhere. Um, it's very nice sound. I love this. I love this microphone to bits. Okay. And then, uh, just this year, in January, I got this. You know? It's a Rode NT5 small diaphragm condenser. And um, <coughs> what's this? Um, I got it this year because I had an, uh, an orchestral recording project. Uh, we were supposed to be in the concert hall now, no, this month. No? But <laughs> well, we know that's not going to happen, <laughs> no, so that'll have to wait. No, so but, but I got it anyway, and it's here, and it's ready to roll. Okay. Now, I got a bunch of other stuff here. No. So I got um, my USB interface for my computer. It's a Focusrite 18i20, and it's got eight inputs. <coughs> it's kind of complicated to patch, and sometimes I forget how to patch it up, but, you know, well. And then I got a pair of, you know, uh, Mackie MR8 Mark II monitors. You know. <coughs> and then I got, well, headphones. I got this, uh, I have uh, one open, headphone, it's an HD58 
ex-Jubilee Sennheiser from Mastrop. <coughs> and then I my closed headphones, because sometimes you need to, uh, no, you need to uh, isolate yourself from the outside world. I got Audio Technica ATH M70X. So, so that's my rig. Well, that's most of it anyway. Um, <coughs> and so I, I thought I was ready. You know? But it turns out you know, one of the problems with these uh, microphones is that if you, you know, the, these things have a sweet spot. So you have to be at a certain distance you know, and, and position <coughs> from it you know, to get the best sound. The trouble is if you move away from the mic, then the sound changes. Not just the loudness, no, but uh, the timbre changes too. No, around. So that means that if I use this thing, I was stuck in one position and I couldn't move around. No. So the solution would have been a lavalier or a lapel mic. No. The trouble with my phone headset was the cable was kind of short. Yeah, it's kind of short. So if I connected it to me, no, there, and I plug this into the interface, and if I had to move away, <coughs> no. So that was out. So the solution would have been <coughs> to get a, a proper long cord lavalier or lapel mic. No. <coughs> so I did some window shopping on Lazada, and a cheap one would have cost uh, a couple of hundred pesos. No. A slightly better one with a belt pack and an XLR con connector <coughs> would start at about 5,000. No. A cheap wireless system with a transmitter and a receiver would have cost under 10,000. And a big name wireless system could go for anywhere from 30,000 to 100,000 bucks. No. So I looked at secondhand stuff too. Trouble was payment and delivery were kind of complicated during the lockdown. But after prowling the FB marketplace, carousel, and other wireless secondhand sites, I saw a pair of used big brand wireless systems going for an unbelievably low price. And I mean, I it was so low that it was too good to be true. Now, because I had never used wireless systems before and I wasn't familiar with them, I had to ask a concert producer friend, ah, hi Juno, <laughs> if this was a scam or not. No. <coughs> he said, based on the pictures, it was the real deal. So I finally got the guts and contacted the seller and found out that he lives a kilometer away <laughs> from me <laughs> in an adjacent village to mine. So I said, Come on. I, I, I went down and I grabbed them the next day before anyone else. No. As it turns out, it's not a lavalier mic. It's a headset mic. No. This is uh, actually I got two. No. For the price of <laughs> one tenth. Okay. <coughs> this is the headset. Now these things are for the ears and this is the mic. No. And so there's a cable and it connects to this uh, transmitter unit. This is the transmitting unit. Uh, it's a Sennheiser uh, SK300G4. No. And then the, <coughs> the receiving unit is up here. This one is on the top of my monitors. Actually, it's behind my monitors. Okay. That's the receiving unit, and it's got this little pair of rubber ducky antennas. No. So, <coughs> I'm set. I can move around. And, wee, wee. and uh, the mic stays with me. No. <coughs> Unfortunately for me, I suffer from what musicians call gas or gear acquisition syndrome. And you can never have enough stuff. In fact, I'm interested in this nifty little gadget from Sennheiser called the memory mic. And I might be tempted to get one before the end of the year. <laughs> but well, 
that'll have to wait. <laughs> now, <coughs> the final issue I had to deal with was ambient noise. Now, my workspace is a loft. It's not an enclosed room with air conditioning. Now, I, I, I don't like to work, and my rig wouldn't fit in my bedroom. Besides, the electricity consumed by constant air conditioning will kill my wallet. No. So that's out. <coughs> so, <coughs> you know, household and community noises are unavoidable. No? Thankfully, I live in a rather quiet village and have quiet neighbors. No? And the rest of my family are working at home at the same time as me. So we kind of keep to our own spaces <coughs> of the house and don't interrupt each other. No? But there will always be domestic noises which can't be helped. I guess we'll all have to deal with it in our own respective ways, no? Uh, but we're all in this en together anyway, no? Uh, students, teachers, we're all, we all have, we're all working from home, no? So it's inevitable we're going to have to deal with this, no? But um, that's okay. You know, gives it gives uh, this thing a homey feeling, no? <coughs> So, okay, next week, I'm planning a very different episode, no? I, it's not going to be show and tell like this week, no? Uh, it's more about issues, because <coughs> um, there are lots of issues, no? Some of them I'm very excited about. No? There's things that I want to do, and, uh, you know, which I, either I have the experience to do them, or I've never done it before, so I'm really, really, really excited to get on it, no? But there are other issues which really bother me, no? no. Especially, you know, pr problems with students, no? They're going to have all sorts of problems. I mean, like, you know, I'm, I'm okay here, you know, I'm kind of fully equipped here, no? <coughs> but my students, will probably, many of my students will probably have a hard time. You know. So next week, that's, that's what I want to talk about. You know. and I gather my outline and <coughs> go through them one by one. Okay, so <coughs> this is my sound rig. Um, it's been a nice week. You know. <coughs> Stay tuned for next week. Okay, until then, bye, bye. And I'm going to stop the recording. Stop. Three, two, one.